what's up Dragon Ball Super players, welcome back to Crossworld TCG, my name is Logan, and today we're going to be covering my mono red oolong wish deck. Um, this deck is really cool, it's very similar to a lot of mono red uh, midrange decks that are floating around, except it takes advantage of the fact that we are playing a wish leader to allow us to play some of the more powerful wish cards like Child's Wish and World Peace on top of the amounts of card or on top of the energy cheating that Chain Attack Trunks gets us. Um, right now we can only play the red peel-off leader with this, hopefully we get another uh, another leader in the future, but overall this guy's not too bad. Let's get into his effect. Auto once per turn when your battle card, uh, when one of your battle cards attacks gets plus 5k for the duration of the turn, then choose up to one Dragon Ball from your deck or life add it to your hand then shuffle the areas you look through. So this is really cool in combination with the red battle cards that we play. Um, we play a couple of two drop battle cards that already have 1500 attacks so the fact that you can bump them by 5k, draw a card and put additional pressure on is really cool. Um, it'd be even cooler if you could uh, add two Dragon Balls from your deck to your hand like Shenron can but unfortunately he can't. Uh, however when you have seven Dragon Balls in your drop, choose one desire card in your drop, add it to your hand, flip this card over and then he becomes Oolong always wanting more. Uh, and then he's very similarly to the other wish leaders he has an activate main choose one draw one or choose one red or black desire card in your hand with energy cost less than or equal to your current energy activate activate main skill very similar to the other wish leaders except the difference here is obviously that it's red or black instead of black or, or instead of like Shenron which is like any color or this one which is uh or the green one which is like green black etc and then his ability is to remove seven drag bolt cards in your drop area from the game if you do draw three which is really cool just drawing three cards out of nowhere is pretty uh pretty solid to refill your hand size so you got cell chained or guji to seven uh choose one of your battle cards gains plus 15k for the duration of the turn then flip this card over to the end of the turn so the fact that it gives something 1500 attack points is really cool too if you're giving that attack value to something that has multiple attacks it's also very strong uh, like that Kefla we play in the main deck. So he's uh, really cool. He has a really solid effect. Um, I just wish the front side was a little bit better. Added dra two Dragon Balls instead of one. Um, it makes Awakening a little bit harder. And unfortunately, I think that's one of the biggest reasons why we're seeing the Black Shenron decks uh, have more lists than any of these other guys because the fact that you can only add one per turn really slows down your curve and forces you to play a few more awkward cards that you wouldn't necessarily have to play in other lists. But jumping into the deck profile, we have obviously our seven Dragon Balls. You need this to be able to awaken in the first place. Uh, draws one card, really solid. I'm not playing any of the other ones. Um, I didn't feel like they were super necessary because you don't really want to waste energy on the first turn to activate a one star ball to drop one of these things into the drop because you need to be playing your my trusted lackeys which actually searches for your dragon balls from your deck so that's actually very important so you don't really have the opportunity to do that um, however because we're playing actual battle cards uh, we can combo away the cards in our hand that we want to revive later with child's wish and world peace uh, but moving down the line we have two dragon radar another really good card allows us to add back our desire cards late game uh, allows us to keep going keep playing early game it allows us to cycle through see more cards really it's just a really solid plus one Moving on, we have three Child's Wish. This card is the bread and butter of the deck. Very similar to the effect that our Chain Attack Trunks is. Uh, it's almost like we are playing somewhere like eight copies of Chain Attack Trunks because World Peace can bring back Chain Attack also. But Child's Wish allows you to choose one battle card in your drop with 1500 or less power and energy cost of three or less and play it. Uh, there's tons of really solid targets in the deck. We have our Yamcha's Everybody, Everybody's Pal, Quick Rush Trunks, Burst Attacks on Gohan, Fearless Pan, which is one of the best ones because it allows you to give your whole board uh, double strike. Uh, this Vegeta if you need to clear cards. Um, so tons and tons of good targets for Child's Wish, just like there's tons of good targets for Chain Attack. Moving on, we play two copies of World Peace. This card is a little less vital to our strategy. However, it allows us to bring back Chain Attack Trunks from our drop, which is very good because we can uh, World Peace for free to bring out a Chain Attack Trunks. Chain Attack's Trunks can bring out something from our hand, like a Fearless Pan, give our board double strike. So a really solid inclusion. Or this card can bring out the Shenron Figure of Majesty, which is also very strong. Uh, this guy has a Sparking 5. Choose up to two, uh, draw a card, and then you get the choice of one of these three effects. Choose up to two of your energy, switch them to active mode. Choose one of your battle cards with energy of two or less, or choose one of your uh, battle cards against 5k and crit for the turn. Um, really, all three of the effects are relevant in this deck because we have very strong uh, two drop targets. You can bring back Yamcha's Everybody's Pal to search for more cards, or you can bring back a Quick Rush Trunks to apply a little bit more pressure. If this guy survives more than one turn on your board, uh, little bit unlikely but if he does he gains tons and tons of value and even more so because we're playing quality two drops to bring back off of him 
Moving on, we still play two of the Zeno, the Plain God. This card is still just very good at resetting the game. If you get stuck behind on resources, the fact that you can shuffle back your opponent's deck and then uh, draw five, uh, a little bit weaker than Pan, because in Pan you get to draw six, but still being able to reset the game state. Uh, you don't even need to have the chain attack in hand or this in hand. If you get the seven energy, you can world piece this back or you can world piece back chain attack for free to drop Zeno, which is really cool because you get to recycle or uh, reset the board state and then potentially drop another chain attack into another something else or to drop the Dark Deborah immediately afterwards, which is really cool. Um, moving on, we have four copies of After Image Technique. This card is really cool. Since we're playing a red leader, we have access to this, uh, this card, which is choose up to one of your cards. It gets plus 40k for the duration of the battle. Then choose one of your opponent's battle cards. It gets minus 10k. And it's a sparking five negate. So if you have five or more in the drop, which is very easy with Dragon Balls or any wish deck because you're able to fuel your drop with Dragon Balls, you're able to activate the counter from your hand by adding a life. So this card, this negate is really good against... Uh, matchups like Storm, and it's also just uh, one of the, the best negate we can play in this deck, honestly. Um, the fact that it, you're able to top out and still use this negate is very, very good. Moving on, we play for my trusted, trusted lackey. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't really want to play this card. Um, it's when you play this card, choose up to one Dragon Ball from your deck, add it to your hand, then shuffle your deck. I don't think it's that great, but unfortunately, because of how inconsistent the leader is, for Awakening, you do need to be playing this card. It is very important to see this card early on. Um, if you see it in your hand, <clears throat> keep every single copy you see because you'll use all of them to help you Awaken quicker. Um, really, this deck might struggle uh, with even Awakening by turn 4. There might be a need to bump up even more uh, Dragon Ball fetching cards in the deck. However, the deck space was really tight. I wanted to play all of these cards. I thought all these cards were really solid. Um, so I opted to just go with the four of my trusted lackey. And with your peel off by turn four, you should be able to search four, potentially see another one. And then if you've seen a few Mai's, uh, they're pretty good. Worst comes to worst, you can Child's Wish back a my trusted lackey in order to add another Dragon Ball from your deck to your hand. That's not the worst thing in the world because when you awaken, you get to add back that Child's Wish anyways. Uh, moving on, we are playing the 4 Master Roshi. This is the Sparking 5 Super Combo 0 10k. Really good with Dragon Balls. Um, the fact that you get to put all your Dragon Balls in the drop super quickly, really strong. And Master Roshi turns on uh, pretty quickly. Not as quickly as the Shinron lists, but still very fast. Moving on, we play 3 Everybody's Pal Yamcha. This card's really good too. It's a 2 cost, uh, 2 red, 15k. And when this card attacks, look at the top 3 cards of your deck. Choose up to one Earthling card among them, add it to your hand, then shuffle your deck. So this card is really, really cool. Um, allows you to put pressure on early, allows you to get advantage with your leader effect, allows you to search for additional cards. We're playing a ton of Earthlings in the deck. Um, this Master Roshi is an Earthling, this Mai is an Earthling, itself is an Earthling, Quick Rush is an Earthling, Burst Attack is an Earthling, Fearless is an Earthling, and Chain Attack is an Earthling. Uh, some of our more potent cards aren't Earthlings, but they're so good I decided to include them in the deck e either way. Um, really, the amount of quality cards you can search off of Yamcha's Everybody Pal, Everybody's Pal is fantastic, and the fact that you can bring him back off a of Child's Wish is even better. Uh, continuing on, we're playing three copies of Quick Rush Trunks. This card allows you to put on a ton of pressure early on because it's a two-drop crit. It allows you to, if you see it early on, play it on your uh, turn two and swing with it, give it an additional 5k with your leader effect, and then draw a card, which is really cool. So uh, it turns your, it's similar to Pan, where you're giving this guy 20k, and your opponent's probably gonna not going to be able to combo out of that uh, 20k crit on turn two, which is really good for pressure. And then continuing, oh, also the fact that this guy, you can Child's Wish this back, or Shenron Figure of Majesty this back, and then uh, evolve it into Chain Attack Trunks if you need to reset the game state with Zeno, is also very powerful. Um, so that's why he's in here included at three. Moving on, I'm playing two copies of Burst Attacks on Gohan. This is one of the more niche chain attack targets you can bring out. Uh, he has crit when this card attacks. If you have four or less cards in your hand, draw two. So um, like the other cards, <clears throat> like our uh, Everybody's Pal Yamcha, this guy allows you to cycle back resources, draw additional cards. So really, this guy is really solid. The crit is really strong. The fact that he's an Earthling, really strong. <laughs> uh, not too much needs to be said. Uh, moving on, we have the best chain attack trunks target. Fearless Pan, 3 drop, 15k, blocker, barrier, auto, when you play this card, choose all of your red leader cards and red battle cards, they gain plus 5k power and double strike for the duration of the turn. This girl is amazing. This card is really what makes red 
I think at the moment. The fact that you can build a board uh, early on because you're playing lower to the ground than a lot of the other Shenron lists and then dropping this card to be able to put on a ton of pressure is really cool. We play a ton of crit in the deck which is really cool. Um, the fact that you can give your Kefla crit or a, dual, or a double strike is really cool. So um, the fact that you, this, this card just puts on a ton of pressure. I don't think anything more needs to be said about her uh, except for the fact that she is a barrier blocker so if you're playing against Victory Strike she has even more added utility. Continuing on, we have another uh, chain attack target. We have two Glory Obsessed Prince of Destruction Vegeta. This card's really good too. Uh, three drop, 15k, so he's able to be brought back off a of Child's Wish. And this helps you clear battle cards. He's basically a mini Jiren. When this card attacks a battle card, switches cards active mode, and it gains plus uh, 10k for the duration of the battle. So the first thing it attacks, it's swinging out for 30k, so your pro opponent probably has to let it die. And then uh, you can use that secondary attack to either clear another threat or to swing at your leader or your opponent's leader if you Fearless Pan gave this double strike for the turn. Moving on, we have another linchpin of the deck, Chain Attack Trunks. This card has been fantastic forever now. Uh, four drop, three, ener three red energy, which is a pretty uh, high cost red energy. That's why you don't keep, we're playing a pretty red heavy deck, is that we don't really want to miss charge because sometimes you do have to hard cast your Chain Attack to reset the game. Um, when this card comes into play, you may choose one battle card in your hand with the power of 1500 or less and play it. So as I said, there's tons of targets in the deck. Yamcha's Everybody Pal, Quick Rush Trunks, Burst Attacks on Gohan, Zeno the Plane God, Fearless Pan, Glory Obsessed Prince Vegeta. Like all this stuff is really solid chain Zeno target or uh, chain attack targets, uh, which allow you to extend your plays and put more pressure on your opponent. Simple as that. Uh, really, this whole deck is built around the cur or playing your turn four or five uh, being very big turns for this deck um, pretty solid mid range deck overall hits its curve slightly before some of the other Shenron decks if not matches pace with them which is really nice moving on we have two dark uh, duo Deborah uh, specifically dark duo Deborah because if you uh, go over his effect first uh, when you play this card choose up to two of your opponent's uh, hands and send them to the warp when this card leaves the battle area your opponent adds all cards sent to the warp by this card skill to their hand so specifically why we're playing this over say for seeing hit is the fact that for seeing hit can only be summoned from the hand to get his rip 2 effect whereas dark duo Deborah can be brought back off a world piece and still rip 2 so um, really this slot is either for seeing hit or dark duo Deborah but dark duo, uh, duo Deborah edges out hit because of that interaction with world piece and a really cool thing that you can do with this is go chain attack or uh, world piece out use your leader effect to activate world piece for free bring about chain attack uh, trunks go into Zeno the plane god shuffle the uh, your opponent's stuff back and if you draw into a world piece with a Deborah and drop or if you ha just draw into the Deborah you can hard cast Deborah rip another two cards uh, and leave your opponent at a very small hand size uh, unfortunately that will leave you tapped out so I wouldn't recommend it but it is a play option that you can do um, just limiting your opponent's hand size is really strong especially when you have a ton of things in the deck that will gain you advantage and also deal critical damage to your opponent um, really just a really solid uh, card 05k so he can easily be comboed away and then brought back for free uh, moving on to the last two cards in the deck we have Saiyan Onslaught Kefla this card's really cool she has deflect dual attack when this card is played using Union Batera or attacks draw one card and this card gains plus 5k for the duration of the turn so this in tandem with Fearless Pan and the leader effect becomes very big very quickly um, you get two swings with a double strike and uh, on her first swing, she'll get a fi plus 5k from the pan, uh, plus 5k from her own attack. And if you use the peel off on her, that's an additional 50 or a 15, so plus 25. So immediately on her first attack, she goes up to uh, 50,000 <laughs> double strike, which is kind of absurd, especially since she's going to be drawing a card and restanding herself. Uh, but if you also had a Shenron figure of Majesty set up previously on the turn, you can give her crit plus 5k. So then on her, uh, she'll be swinging for a 55, 60k double strike crit, drawing cards both times, and then you drew three for your leader effect. So this is it's really cool. It allows you to put on a ton of pressure in the late game. Um, another really quality target for world peace. We're only playing two in here, however, because um, by the time we get to turn five, we wait, maybe want to be playing one uh, or one on turn six or, or world piecing her back out after uh, she's killed. So really... She, uh, she has a ton of good utility in the deck, however, solid 2 of, uh, good boss monster in the deck, good recursion, allows you to keep playing. A lot of the cards in this deck that are either designed to clear threats or, uh, <laughs> or recur advantage, I mean that's most cards in the game, but a lot of these do it very well, like 
quick uh, burst attacks on Gohan allows you to put pressure on while also drawing cards. And this uh, Glory Obsessed Vegeta allows you multiple attacks. Fearless Pan gives you uh, aggressive plays but also a blocker. Chain Attack allows you to attack active battle cards, also cheating something out. So all these cards I think re work really well together. Um, you'll see most of these cards in your standard mono or red mid-range decks like Pan or Yamcha. Overall, I think they're really cool. Uh, really cool that you're able to play all these cards in tandem with the leader, which gives you access to wish targets. Um, I mean, aside from that, that's all I have to say about this deck. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this deck profile. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. If you guys haven't already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. And this has been Logan here with Crossworld TCG, and I'll see you guys next time.